What's up Laravel developers, this is Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to talk about mail usage in Laravel. Now before I continue on with the video, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon. You get some pretty cool benefits such as a private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out and you can decide the video series that I'm going to create through polls. So if you're interested to join, the link is in the description down below. If you have watched my previous Laravel videos, you know that we have touched on a lot of topics of Laravel. But one of the most important ones in my opinion is mailing in Laravel. In web-based applications, sending an email or notification is a very, very common requirement. And to be honest, this can be done in multiple ways. There are loads of mail functionality layers that you can build on top of the default layer functionality, which is the Swift Mailer. In order to see your mail configuration, you need to go to the convic folder. And in here, you can see a file called mail.php. So let's open it. If you want to send actual emails to clients or customers, you need something which is called a mail driver. And if we scroll down, you can find all the drivers that come with Laravel for mailing. We have SMTP, SES, Mailgun, Postmark, SendMail, Log, and Array. Now one thing that all of these drivers have in common is that a lot of variables are being called from the EMV file. Since Laravel 5.3, a new mailable syntax has been developed. Before this ever came out, there was a classic mailing system which was very easy to use. But for the purpose of this video, and to not make it longer than it should be, I'm going to focus on the mailable. Now the goal is to create a specific PHP class that will represent a mail. And this needs to be generated in the CLI. So let's go to the CLI. Now before I show you how we could actually generate a mail, let's write down PHP artisan help make colon mail. You can see the usage of the mail function. So whenever you try to perform a make colon mail command, you need to pass in one argument, which is the name. So the name of the class that you want to create. You can see that there are a couple options. You probably won't need most of them except for the markdown, but we will cover it in a bit. What we want to do is to create a new mailable class. So let's say PHP artisan make call in the mail called welcome mail. If we hit enter, you can see that the mail has been created successfully. And if we go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that a new file has been created or a new folder called mail. So let's open it and it's right inside of the app folder. So let's open welcome mail.php. If we look at the class, right, you can probably see a class that looks familiar to you. It imports two traits. The first one is queuable and that's used in order to queue your email. And the second one is serializes model. And this is used so that every eloquent model will be serialized correctly. You could also find the constructor, which is empty right now, so let's skip forward. Next to the constructor, there is one method defined, which is the build method. Now inside this build method, you are going to define the view that you want to use. As you can see right here, you're basically returning a view. So this view, it searches for a folder called view with a file name of name. Now besides the view, you could also pass in the subject or anything else that you want to show the user. If you have properties that you want to use inside your mailable class, you need to pass them inside your controller. So they will be available inside the template that you're going to create. We won't be doing that in this video, but I will do it later on. There's one thing that is not correct in this file. It returns a view of view.name, but we haven't created that file. Now, in order to create the view ourselves, we could also do that in the CLI. So what we need to do right now is to remove welcome mail. So let's delete it. Move to trash, go back to iTerm, hit the arrow up, and we're indeed going to create a welcome mail, but I want to add a dash M flag to it. As you can see in the options menu, dash M stands for markdown, and it will create a new markdown template for the mailable. What I usually prefer to do is to create a folder called emails. So let's say space emails dot, and the dot stands for the folder, like I said before. Inside the emails folder, I want to create the file. So let's call it welcome. Let's hit enter. And you can see that a mail has been created successfully as well. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. We indeed have our welcome mail. Open it. And as you can see in the return markdown, you can see that emails.welcome has been called. We still haven't created the file. But like I said, if we go to resources views, you can see a new folder called emails, which will refer to emails in the markdown. And if we open it, 
there's a file called welcome.blade.php, which is basically the welcome after the dot. Let's open it, because this is not the typical blade.php file that we're used to. If we want to open it in the browser, we need to create a new route, because we obviously want to change some stuff up. So let's open web.php. At the bottom, let's create a new row. So let me add a comment, route for mailing. So what I want to do is to basically do the same thing as always. So route, colon, colon, get. Inside the get method, we have a first param, which is the endpoint. So forward slash email. I want to pass in a second param. So let's say comma, which is a function. Curly braces, hit enter. And what we need to do inside our route is basically to return a new instance of the welcome mail class that we just created. We're getting an error message because our web.php file does not know where welcome mail comes from. So what we could do is to remove it, say welcome mail. And you can see that the use statement will be automatically pulled in if we click on the option. So let's do that. Let's add parentheses ourselves and a semicolon. And if we go to the top, you can see a use statement of app backslash mail backslash welcome mail. If we save it, it should actually work in Google Chrome. So let's go there. Let's change the endpoints to forward slash email. And as you could see, the predefined interface is generated for us and we can see it in the browser since we created it with a dash M flag. Now, the most important question is probably where is this all coming from? Because if we go back to the welcome.blade.php file, we're seeing stuff on the screen that we haven't seen before. As you can see, we're using a hashtag introduction. If we go to Chrome, it's this piece of text right here. So let's change it up. Let's change it to welcome to my authentication and mailing course. Save it, go back to the browser, refresh it, and we just changed that piece of text. What about the paragraph? So what about the body of your message? So let's change that up to, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Save it, Google Chrome, refresh it, and it has been printed out as well. There's also a button right here, which does not look like a clickable button, but it's using a component to mail column column button, which we will cover in a second, but it does accept a URL. So what we could do is to basically say HTTPS column column backslash backslash www.codewithdari.com. Change the text to visit site, save it, go back to Chrome, refresh it, and we have a new button right here. Now, what about Laravel right here? You usually don't want to send an email with Laravel in it. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that it's calling a convic method and is looking for an app.name. Now, this is searching for the name inside the .env file. So let's open it up. At the top of our screen, you can see app underscore name, which is equal to Laravel. So let's change it to odd app. Save it, go back to the browser, and Laravel has been replaced with odd app. Next to the template that we just created, we can also extend other templates, use sections, parse variables, contain conditional statements. So pretty much anything that you can do in a normal blades view. What I want to do right now is to send an actual email. We can either set up a mailing provider or a local development. In this video, I want to focus on a mailing provider called Mailtrap. Let's open a new tab in the browser and let's go to mailtrap.io. Let's hit enter. Whenever you want to test your emails before you send it to an actual client, you can use Mailtrap. What it does is basically catching your email in a virtual box so you can text and optimize your email. So what I want you to do is to pause the video, Sign up, it's very easy. You can use your Google account, GitHub account, or Office account, or you can just sign in with an email. Pause the video, set up an account, and I will see you back in a second. Whenever you're done with the setup part, you will probably land on the screen that I have on right now. Inside my SMTP settings, we have a section called integrations right here. As you can see, it's on C URL. So if we open the drop down, you can see a lot of programming languages. Obviously, the one that we need is Laravel 7, so let's click on it. And as you can see, the box right here has been changed and our SMTP data have been printed out. And if you're familiar to the .env file, you can see that this looks pretty much like .env variables. So what we could do is to copy it. And before I continue on, 
don't copy or use mine because it obviously will be different for you. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's go right below our mailing. Let's actually replace it. Let's hit backspace, paste it right here, save it. Whenever you want this to work, you need to basically break off your PHP artisan surf and run it again. So let's do that. Let's go to iTerm. Let's go to the PHP artisan surf tab. If you want to break off your serving, you need to press Control C. And as you can see, we just broke it off. Hit the arrow up, run PHP artisan surf again. Our development server has been started. The application that we got knows, all right, we have a mailing provider called MailTrap, as they can see right here. So the variable mail underscore mailer, and it knows how to interact with it with all the different variables. Before we make it work, we need to define where we're going to mail it to. Let's go to the web.php file again, right inside of our route. We need to add one more line of code. So let's go right above our return instance. Let's say mail. Let's hit enter because we need to pull in the illuminate support vacate mail, colon, colon. Then we need to define the receiver. So let's say two parentheses, semicolon. Inside the two method, we need to basically pass in a string. And this string will be the email of the receiver. So let's say single quotes, info at darinazar.com. This can be any email that you want to use. The best way to do this is to have the actual user that is logged in, but let's not do that for now. Outside of the two method, we need to add an access operator because we need to define one more method, which is where we want to send it to. So let's say send. And inside the send method, we need to pass in the new welcome mail. Save it. Once again, be aware that you pull in the illuminate mail. Otherwise, you will receive an error. Now let's save this file. Let's go back to Google Chrome. Go to our local host. Refresh the page. And as you can see, it takes a bit longer. So something is going on right here. Let's go back to MailTrap. And as you can see, we have received our first email. This was a very simple example. During the next few videos, I want to show you how you could reset passwords, add attachments, and I will also show you how you could verify your email before you register. Now, this was it for this video. In the next video, I want to set up a local development for mailing. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.